Well, what's up, guys? Dig with Mess Chan. I want to talk about United, of course, losing 2-1 to Crystal Palace yesterday. And I apologize for the lighting. I unfortunately didn't have time to record today, and I have to do with uh, the natural light that comes in through my front door. So um, it is what it is, I guess. But regardless, I want to get my—I uh, kind of want to get my point across here, which is, as you can see from the title, Man United are still trash. And um, I think that coming into the season, there was enthusiasm, but I think that realistically, we pretty much all had the same opinion, which was. We're in for a very tough fight to finish in the top four. That's just the reality. Because, yes, we improved our defensive um, our defensive qualities, which, of course, yesterday they weren't on show because, um, unfortunately, you know, Lindelof was made a fool of, um, just got destroyed physically. It's embarrassing. But um, I guess it's just kind of something to kind of expect. He's not really that kind of player. He's not a Maguire. He's not a Chiellini. He's not a, a Sergio Ramos. He's just not that guy. Uh, Ashley Young came on, and he's pure garbage. Literally, Willie Zaha had him flopping around on the floor. That's just how just garbage he has as a defender. Um, Luke Shaw, unfortunately, he's not the best left back in the world, and he did go off with an injury. Hopefully, something serious, because um, if we lose him, then that means either Young's have to play or Delot, which Delot has very solid offensive capabilities, but defensively, he's just not there. Um, he might still improve, but he's just not there. He's kind of like a worst Joao Cancelo. Um... So yeah, we have some we have a lot of issues defensively. I think that it was pretty much clear from the get go that we needed to sign in we need to sign two center backs because Lindelof's not bad, but he's a good backup, but he's no starter. He's just, he's just not that level. He can still improve, but he's just not gonna he's never gonna be on that level realistically. Um Maguire's definitely good, he's solid. Nothing gets past him. I don't I don't have any blame on him for that goal, nor do I have any blame on Aaron Wambasaka. Um so realistically, man, like the people that are making mistakes are the people that are still there. Of course, Paul Pogba um, didn't have a great game, but I think that it was more, it was a type of game where he's just not going to shine. Because if you think about it, what's he what's he there for? He's there to create, and he was playing too deep against a team like Crystal Palace, who are going to just sit back the whole time and let you do your thing. When you're playing against a team that's going to park the bus, you need your best offensive players near the goal. I'm not saying he has to be among the top, you know, among the top four. He needs to be, you know, a bit more offensive. You can play a four-two-three-one, but he has to be creating chances. He has to be getting himself in the dangerous positions. Because um, just realistically, man, like as a, as a playmaker towards the back, he's fine against teams like Chelsea. You're gonna attack the shit out of you. He's fine against Liverpool and stuff like that. That's fine because he has the physically the physical gifts to do a job in front of the defense. But he also has the creative abilities to launch quick counterattacks. Unfortunately, like I said, against a team like Crystal Palace, is gonna sit there and let you do your game. We don't have a lot of players that are capable of actually doing something in those situations. I think that if you look at the type of team that Crystal Palace are. Who would have been the best in there? Not Jesse Lingard, who is pretty much only good for counterattacking. Rashford, fine. Uh, Martial, fine, because they are your two best offensive players. J D Daniel James, yes, he got the goal, but like realistically, man, he didn't have a good game at all. Like, you know, the kid has had a lot of talent for sure. He's got a lot of pace and all that stuff, but he is a player that needs to come in late in the game. He is a sub. He is a sub. All right, he's he's nothing more than that right now. Um, I, that's my opinion. I think that in a game like this where you have to have 90%, well not 90%, like 70% of the possession, where they're literally just going to sit back and wait for you to make a mistake before they even touch the ball. You need a player like Angel Gomez, you need a player like Juan Mata, you need Andreas Pereira. These are the players that you need to be having on the pitch. If it were up to me, I would probably would have played a 4-3-3 with, you know, of course, the little back line, which is, it is what it is, that's what we have. You can't really, uh, you can't change out Lindelof, because if then, then you're going to be putting in Phil Jones, who is worse, Chris Smalling, which is worse, so you're not improving anything. Um, you have to use the players you have, and that's pretty much all we have. Um, the fullbacks, that's, that's, those are the best players, and wan is fine. Like I said, Harry Maguire and wan top level in my opinion. Midfield, I would have played Paul Pogba, probably McTominay, and definitely Andreas Pereira. I think this was a perfect game for him. If not Andreas Pereira, then somebody like Angel Gomez. Up front, of course, uh, Martial as the as a striker. On the left, I would definitely would have had Rashford. And then as the as the winger over there, I probably would have had either Mata, who I don't think he can play the wing, but I probably would have played somebody like Angel Gomez or maybe even Chong, something like that. Somebody who has the talent, who has the gifts, who can create something. You know, people who can play in a pass. Or if you want to play uh, with Pereira as the right winger, who has done that in his career with, with Valencia, he used to do that all the time. Uh, if you can play him there, and that in the middle you can play somebody like uh, Angel Gomez. You have, or Juan Mata. You have the options. It's just, for some reason, Ali went out there and he put in a, a full counterattacking team, which just does not fit a match against Crystal fucking Palace. Like, like I said, it's okay to play against play that kind of situation against Chelsea or a team that's going to have confidence on the ball. They're going to want to attack you. They're going to try to beat you home and away. Crystal Palace, realistically, the only way you could lose to them, who just got destroyed by Sheffield Wednesday or Sheffield United, whichever Sheffield they are, who the fuck knows, is, just, is literally just playing into their hands, which is 
making dumb mistakes. That's literally the only way you could possibly lose against a trash team like that. Roy Hodgson, if I'm not mistaken, a full-time devil said this, he has been managing since 1973. This man has seen every type of style in the book, but most importantly, you've seen the way this guy's played for decades now. Literally almost half a century this man's been coaching. So you know how he's going to play. And I have to say, man, like it's I'm not saying Ollie out. I'm, I'm far from that, but I'm just saying this is a moment where Ollie has to take a lot of the blame because, yes, the players, they didn't perform all that stuff, and the players that are on the pitch are the ones that have to go out there and perform. That's fine. But in this situation, Ollie Gunnar Solster got absolutely fucked up by Roy Hodgson because Roy Hodgson played just a park-the-bus match against a team that's going to be counterattacking, a team with literally only one player who's capable of creating chances, which is Paul Pogba. Nobody else in that starting lineup had that capability. Big Tomini, he has worse feet than me. He has worse feet than me. Literally, when he won the penalty, I sent my friend Giovanni, shout out to him, literally a message saying, it would have been better for them to just let the guy shoot. If, if that threw, if that uh, one two would have come together between uh, him and Martial, McTominay would have been one on one with the keeper. I almost guarantee you he would have missed that shot. So it would have been better for them to just let him go through on goal. That's the kind of player that we have there, which is fine. A holding midfielder is fine. He's not good enough. He's just nowhere near good enough, but he might improve. But he's definitely not good enough right now. But he is, he's what we have. It's either him or Nemanja Matic. I see him more like a, a more stationary version. I mean, a more um, a more um, mobile version of Nemanja Matic. Is he better? I don't necessarily know, but Matic at the stage of, stage of his career just doesn't really have anything other than positioning. So I don't really know uh, who I would play, play play over those two. It's just neither one of them is particularly good, but it's just that's just the thing, though. We just don't have that good a team. Like, we have a decent attacking force if you just look at the main players. Like, if you look at Rashford, Martial... And I guess maybe Greenwood, but like these are all really young players that just they still have so much to do. I can rely on Martial, I can somewhat rely on Rashford, but really there's nobody else in that offensive line that I can rely on. Whether Sanchez leaves or not, um, at this point, I, I I like I would like to see him leave because I don't think he's that great as a as in the locker room more than likely. But at the same time, he's our only experienced attacking player. So if we lose him then we're losing a pretty important player in terms of what he can actually produce if he even comes halfway good of what he used to be. So I hope to see him go, but I hope to see him stay. It's an interesting one. Like at this point, I'm probably leaning towards. I kind of hope him to see him to see him stay, honestly, because I wouldn't. I don't think I would have said that a while ago, but I would have expected. I would have expected us to get somebody like Llorente. Um, I don't know what the fuck they're waiting for because we need a backup striker. We don't. We don't have one. When Martial was hurt towards the end of the match, literally, if you look at our bench. All we have is Mason Greenwood, and he's a 17-year-old. You're going to put that much pressure on a 17-year-old. In a team that already has so much pressure on him, a 17-year-old is going to be the guy that you're going to put all your eggs, pretty much you know, a, a pretty silo, sizable amount of eggs in that basket. It's just not smart. So at this point, Alexis Sanchez, I think, needs to stay. Um, if not, then we need to bring in a couple of free agents, say Llorente or something like that. So, but anybody who's capable, because as of right now, it's just... We don't have anybody who can be a leader up front, you know, like Martial and, Mar and Rashford, they have undeniable talent, but they still have so much to prove and they have so much to do. Um, so we'll see, man, especially Mar Rashford. I think that Rashford, he's very, he misplaces a lot of things. Like he, he puts in a work shift. I'll give him that. He has a lot of, uh, a lot of work. He has a very solid work ethic and he puts in a lot of effort, but he still makes so many mistakes, so many stupid mistakes. And uh, there's just so much to improve on here, man. I think experience will tell. They will improve, and they will get better and better and better. But we have such a young team right now that we don't really have any reliable leaders. And, of course, McGuire just came in, so it's not like you can expect him to be, just be an undeniable leader as soon as he comes in. Well, Masaka is still very young as well, so we have a very strong lack of true leaders. Cause I don't think that Paul Pogba is that guy. I just don't think. Like, when I look at Paul Pogba, I think, yeah, he's a phenomenal player. On his day, he's probably the best midfielder in the world, but realistically man is he a leader i don't think so because when things go bad he either gets pissed off and not but not in a good way like roy Keane, he would get pissed off but he would just take things into his own hands and he would not make mistakes he would kick your fucking ass until you got up your fucking ass like literally off your fucking ass if you're on the ground he will get you the fuck up and you will go and you will perform pop pogba is not that guy he's gonna just be pissed off he's gonna look at the sky walk like this just be fucking angry and he's not really gonna do anything he's gonna get a lot of stupid fouls he's not gonna really motivate anybody he's just gonna kind of complain and stuff like that so i just don't really think he's that guy like like i said he's a phenomenal player on his day he's arguably the best midfielder in the world but he's not that leader he's just not the leader and to be completely honest i don't think he ever will be i think he's too good i think i think he believes that he's way that he's actually even better than he actually is and he's already phenomenal but like on his day but i think that he's just he thinks he's just this insane player 
um, and just half the time he's not that. And in fact, it's it's actually his fault that it's his mistake that led to the second goal that killed the game out. Um, so you got to say, man, like Pogba, he's he's got two sides, man. There's the dominant Pogba, and then there's the Pogba who does too much dumb shit in dumb positions and causes uh, causes things like that to happen. So. I'm not going to put all the blame on anybody. Ollie made a made a huge mistake in terms of the team selection. Hopefully, he'll learn from this. The players they probably should have uh, on the pitch just kind of changed things out and kind of went based on feeling. They didn't do that, so I think that they have to learn from that as well. Um, and yeah, I just think there was basically nobody did anything correct yesterday, and I think that's just that really cost us. Um, we'll see what happens, man. We have Southampton coming up. And after that, I think we have Arsenal and Liverpool coming up in the next few matches. Then Newcastle, so. We have a tough next five matches, as you could say. Newcastle's not too difficult, neither is Southampton, at least on paper. But as you can see from Crystal Palace, you know, pretty much anybody can beat us at any time. So every match is difficult for this United team. Um, it's going to be a, either a very, very good September or it's going to be a very miserable September for United's uh, point of view. So hopefully things do get better. But um, as always, over the last few years, things just look worse and worse. And um uh, if you'd asked me for that Chelsea performance, whether we finished top four, I would have said probably. I would have said that leading into the season as well, before the, the Chelsea match. After the Wolves match, I would have said the same thing. But after this one against Crystal Palace, I see too many of the same issues we've had over the past few years. And I, I put out a video a while ago saying that I didn't think that Mourinho was the reason why things were happening. I just think that he needed to leave due to um, just the fact that people, pretty much everybody hated him between the staff and the locker room. But at the same time, I was saying it, this isn't Mourinho's fault. Like from in terms of... The play, I don't think it's Mourinho's fault. And as we're seeing with Ali, there are so many similar issues where it wasn't Louis Van Hall's fault, it wasn't Mourinho's fault. It's literally just the way the club's being run right now. Nothing works. Nothing literally nothing works. And we're getting to the point we're getting to the point where if Ali and the United have a bad September, there's gonna be some ser- pretty serious talks of Ali out by then by then already. So um I'm not gonna be in that camp. I think that this man he he's such a legend for the club and he he deserves to fight his way out of this terrible situation because I think he hasn't been backed by the board. Um, he does. He definitely doesn't have the players necessary to even compete for the title. Um, I guess at this point, a solid season would probably be top four plus Europa League win plus the FA Cup win. That would be a good season, but like realistically, man, I don't see us. I don't see us winning anything this season. Like, I, I, it might just be that I'm, I'm demoralized after that performance, but I'm seeing too many of the same mistakes from the last couple of years. Um, really from the last five, six years. So there's really, I think all the enthusiasm has kind of been killed now. There was some enthusiasm coming into the season, but I think that's pretty much just all being killed because, like I said, it's, it's, it's basically same, different day, same shit. It's just exact same thing. New season, same fucking garbage. So that's my thoughts on United right now. Hopefully things will change. Um, I don't want to be too hard on the players, but I just think that they need to work their asses off and things things need to improve very quickly or... We're in for a very, very, very difficult season. Because Arsenal, they got hammered by Liverpool yesterday. But realistically, they could have been up if Pepe hadn't made a stupid mistake. And if he'd have put that that goal away when he had a completely one-on-one chance with the keeper, then that could have been a completely different match. Like, Arsenal are looking pretty decent. Defensively, they're still shit. No no shock there. They have David Luiz as the best defender, which is just fucking awful. Um, Chelsea, they play good football. They leak very badly in defense. But I think they're going to improve as... As the season goes on, once they get Rüdiger back, so realistically, man, like we're not we're not better than Arsenal or Chelsea, so it's going to be a very very hard hard fight throughout the entire season. Wolves can surprise people, Leicester can surprise people. Who knows? With how even it is between fourth, fifth, and sixth at this point, um, and really seventh and eighth potentially, anything can happen here. We could potentially be out of the Europa League next season, depending on how things go. So United are fucking trash this year. Arsenal are fucking trash more or less. Chelsea are definitely trash. So. It's going to be a matter of who can be less trash as the season moves on. So that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of United right now. Are we completely fucked or do we have a chance of actually doing something this season? Let me know all these things in the comment section down below. Um, If you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video, which hopefully will be a bit better and a bit more positive. But uh, if it's United video, then more than likely it won't be. But have to have the faith, right? So glory, glory, man, United as always. Uh, See you guys.